All right, guys, I got a special episode of the Foresight Podcast for you. Well, they're all special episodes, but this one's pretty cool. Uh, this one's really cool. We're actually going to be talking to entrepreneur, creative, uh, Miss Lady Ray Johnson. She is a radio personality, a, a host. Uh, she does a myriad of things within the city of St. Louis, and we want to be getting into her journey and how she is building her empire. Uh, without further ado, Lady Ray Johnson, let's go. I'm a <laughs> Nice to see you. Likewise, likewise. So here we go. In five, four, three, two. You know you really do that really well. <laughs> I love messing with you about that. All right, let's get started. <laughs> Uh, welcome everybody. Welcome to the Foresight Podcast. My name is David Gordon, better known as DKG72. Uh, well, that's my screen name on uh, YouTube and Instagram and all those cool places. And uh, this is the podcast where we speak to creators and creatives about how they do the things that they do. And being a creative, we're always on different forms of social media, LinkedIn, Instagram, all of those places. And you meet people along your journey while you're posting about whatever it is that you're posting about, artwork, um, podcasts, whatever, right? So when I was uh, first starting out, just kind of advertising about the books that I had and um, some other things I had going on, and of course, when I started posting about having a podcast, I was um, fortunate enough to meet this young lady right here who is our guest today. Now, before we get started, though, and before we get started with our guest, um, let's do a little house cleaning. So first and foremost, got to say uh, thank you to everybody for showing up for the podcast and uh, being listeners and all that good stuff. Uh, just thank you. Thank you so much. We got this little special guest uh, as uh, our super producer, Lamar Harris will also be uh, co-hosting with us today. So this ought to be fun. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. <laughs> so as I was saying before we, uh, before I had to go do a little house cleaning, um, I was able to meet this young lady on a, on a LinkedIn, I believe it was. And instantly kind of just hit it off with her and just, once I had a conversation with her about the things that she was doing and just her journey, I was just like, man, um, just got to have you on the podcast. And uh, so without further ado, I would just like to uh, introduce to everybody and uh, say hello to Miss Lady Ray Johnson. Well, hello. Thank you so much. I'm honored to be on your podcast today. Thank you. Uh, well, we're honored to have you. So um, just kind of tell everybody a little bit about yourself and um, and how, how you got started and and just, you know, just your kind of your background story. OK, sure. Well, in my past life, I was a counselor at two universities here in the St. Louis area. One of them is a HBCU, Harrisville State College at that time, now Harrisville State University. Hey, so I had hey. the awesome opportunity to see the transition oh, take place. Cool. And the University of Missouri, St. Louis. So by degree, I'm a counselor. Mm -hmm. um, as I meet various students when I was at Harris Stowe, there was a student worker that shared a friend with me. We didn't know each other, but we met through a mutual friend. Mm -hmm. And his name was Howard Dallas Jameson. So he wanted to get started in radio. I grew up under the great Bernie Hayes oh, here okay. in uh, St. Louis in radio. 
and I call him Uncle Bernie. And so he asked me if I ran into anyone that was interested in radio broadcast media to send them, he would mentor. And I did that with Howard. Okay. And so over the years, they just maintained a mentoring relationship. Fast forward to 2011, mm -hmm. uh, because that was back in 1900. And then your business, okay? uh, a long uh, time ago. That's what we always say. A long, long time, time ago. ago. <laughs> so fast forward to 2011, mm -hmm. Howard, who is now called Dallas, invited me to become his co-host. And I hope the great Tony Scott and Tammy Holland hear this because what I said to Dallas was, you want me to be the Tammy Holland to your Tony Scott? <laughs> and he said, yes. And that's how my actual radio career began in 2011. I didn't know what I was doing. Mm -hmm. uh, the first day on air, I had, you know, that crystal light kind of stuff you can put in your water. Mm -hmm. I put it in the water. I was chewing gum. All this is going out, <laughs> amplified on air. I'm shaking the water bottle, not real like wearing jewelry and the bracelets are clanging. Oh, I was a hot mess on day one. Oh, wow. But I figured it out and <laughs> got it together. <laughs> and I started doing things that I didn't know was called production. Mm -hmm. I would have ideas and I wanted to see them translate on air mm -hmm. and one of the guys that produced us named tony claire told me you're a producer mm -hmm. and i said i am what how is that i'm a producer he says you come you come up with concepts and ideas you have a way to marry them together and bring them to life on air that's production and once i owned that title mm -hmm. and realized that i could put my creativity into something that I enjoyed, I became a producer. And I started vetting people to come on the air. I started finding interesting people to be a part of the show. And we really started to grow to where we had a podcast manager in Virginia that heard about us. Okay. And so our radio show ended up turning into a podcast on her platform. Oh wow. So you grew from from radio to podcasting and and how long did did that growth process take? Um I would say probably well let me back up. So I was at WGNU on the AM mm -hmm. station for about a year. When we went into negotiations, we just couldn't come to an agreement. So there was a hiatus um, for a little bit from 2011 until about 2013. 2013, I came back. I was producing for Dallas, but I didn't become fully engrossed with him until 2014 as his co-host. And it was all because of what took place in Ferguson. So the unrest that was going on, Ferguson Hot Talk was created. And I was a part of that internet radio station. So okay. the internet radio station okay. then gave us the pathway to the podcast, and we did those two things simultaneously. Wow. So so you're doing the podcast and you're doing radio simultaneously. and At that time. And then television was introduced. And <laughs> television. So so tell us about your journey into television. How How did that work out for you? We had someone that was at the station. Uh, mm -hmm. Her name was Leticia. And she had a contract type job with ABC 30. Okay. She saw what we were trying to do. Um, we had another television station that was internet based that also approached us. And mm -hmm. we decided to go with more of the local community base where we knew that people in the St. Louis area would be able to see us. So we went to ABC 30 with a show called Around Town with Dallas and Ray J. Okay. That gave me another outlet for creativity because we highlighted people, places, and events that mm -hmm. was around town that people would not ordinarily know about right. and gave like the mom and pops their shine so that they would have an opportunity to be seen. And this show was, it was on ABC 30. So it, 
It uh, was on ABC 30. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, we came on right behind Entertainment Tonight and right before The Simpsons. So we was in that wee hours of the morning, but we had an audience of 3,000. Oh, okay. That's a, that's actually a, a that's a big audience, uh, especially with those later times at night. When you say yes, and, absolutely. And, and you were like doing production on on that show. Yes, I was talent. I was doing production. I was booking uh, talent for the show. I created a Make Me Laugh Monday with a local club in the area where we use their set and gave our local comedians an opportunity to perform on stage, many of them for the first time on television. And so that, you know, went very well with comedians. Uh, we actually petitioned, everybody knows her now as Lady Ree, mm -hmm. to be one of the comedians that was on our show. And unfortunately we had some things that took place with equipment, uh, some damage due to flooding. Uh -huh. And so our show ended uh, abruptly, very sad. And so we had to build up in order to get back to that type of production status. Fortunately, our masters were saved. Mm -hmm. So we do have you know, documentation of our television show. But what that showed me was another way to create mm -hmm. and to do things digitally. Mm -hmm. So we have an internet radio station. I'm like, well, let's do everything video. And then I was invited by the great Keith Antone mm -hmm. uh, to come to Mix 995 and be a part of his Saturday morning live show okay. as his co-producer and co-host. And I told him I could only come if I could bring my sidekick Dallas with me. So we both ended up co-anchoring the Saturday morning live show at Mix 995, an FM station mm -hmm. here in St. Okay. Okay. So you've pretty much had a wide and varied um, career just in radio and in, in television locally uh, for a while now, right? Yes, for a while now. Yeah. So when I was first, when I was introduced to you at this point of the proceedings, you are you have an um, internet radio station. And I, I thought that was kind of interesting. I was like, okay. And you were explaining to me kind of how that works. So let's go back to the beginning of when you started the station. What was that process? How did you end up moving into having your own radio station, your internet radio station? And how did that, how did you build that to where it's at right now? Okay, well, when we were at Ferguson, um, there was some things that was going on that I felt could be better, okay. but it wasn't my station. So I said, you know what? I can do this. I can do something better than what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. And I want to create this opportunity for those that are still wanting a platform to get their voices heard because we are the voice of the community. Right. You know, and radio is the soundtrack to your life. So I still wanted to be able to get those opportunities and give those opportunities to others. I decided let's do our own internet radio station. So there are various programs and we chose one that would help to broadcast us out. We got equipment, uh, some that we had to buy. I used monies that I was making uh, and advertising to help me pay for and fund the venture of the internet radio station. So donations, uh, equipment that was donated to me. Mm -hmm. I have a, had a $800 mixer that was donated to me by the Silverman brothers who is known in St. Louis for their jazz shows that they do in the park in University City. Okay. Uh, I was given lots of equipment to try to build this station. We had furniture that was donated to us, and I was at a location in Overland, Missouri called Medici Media Space. Okay. So we utilized that space, and with me being over at Mix 995, I was able to be there not only with the FM station, but also with the internet station. So it was almost like my second home. I spent a lot of time <laughs> helping to build, and we recruited. 
we I came up with a format for shows. Mm -hmm. I wanted to know what would anchor us in the morning, what would end us at night from Sunday to Saturday. Okay. And we had a variety of people that we met through Facebook. Some of them we had interviewed over at Mix, and mm -hmm. I gave them an opportunity if they had an organization, if they had a business, if they just had a concept and they wanted to share that and get that information out. I was mm -hmm. one of the first ones that started doing video FaceTime live on Facebook with radio. Because okay. once again, I'm like, people are not, you know, they have a mindset of what radio really looks like, mm -hmm. but I want them to see what radio looks like. And I started doing that when I was at Ferguson and I continued to do it so that we could also get our numbers and know how many people were interested in what they were interested in. So I wanted radio to be more interactive. And the better way to do that was to pull them in via video. Okay. And so you're going through the process of building the station, you're getting all these donations and you, you get, you've got your studio set up. Um, I know a lot of people just kind of, they don't always know the ins and outs of just running a business like that. So kind of take us inside what, what your day to day work day is running a internet radio station and actively, you know, cause some people just are like, well, doesn't she just press a button and go. And obviously we know that's not the truth. <laughs> no, that's not true. So since we so, know that's not the truth, what, what is the right. truth? <laughs> Okay, so see, like people would see this right now and just feel like you're just sitting there behind the microphone with some headsets and you're talking. Right. But all of the technical part, all of the, you know, the, the man behind the curtain that makes the Wizard of Oz, the Wizard of Oz, is what you're doing, that mad scientist stuff. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? That means that you have to have a program that's available for you to broadcast out that is a good quality program. Right. You need something that can help you follow analytics and know what your listenership is like and where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. You have to program music into the station, uh, PSAs, public service announcements, commercials, mm -hmm. uh, station identifications, disclaimers. All of that is time consuming and you need voice talent. For that mm -hmm. and knowing what's in an hour block, what's in a two hour block. Mm -hmm. Are you going to be a R&B station? Are you going to be a gospel station? Mm -hmm. Are you going to be a talk station or are you going to mix all of this together? Mm -hmm. Being able to highlight and put shine on the talent that's on your platform, teaching them when to stop and acknowledge the station, when to stop for a break. Mm -hmm. uh, what words you legally can say and not say mm. on air. And see, a lot of times people think because it's internet radio, you can just do whatever you want to do and say whatever you want to say. Mm -hmm. But I ran and do run the station as if it's an FM, FCC controlled station. So there are certain things that you have to do. You have to pay attention to your time. You don't stop at the hour. You stop before the hour mm -hmm. so that you can allow public service announcements and commercials and events. People pay for that time. And so you have to be mindful of that. So you're a clock watcher. And time is very sensitive when it comes to radio and TV. Man, that sounds like the world's biggest juggling act. Like you really have to... <laughs> You really have to be on it. So like what, so I guess, a lot. so are, would you consider yourself like a very detail oriented person? Because you, you I guess you gotta be to, to really manage, like you said, and, and be FCC compliant. Well, you know, to be a one woman show, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I have to be the engineer. I have to be the timekeeper. I have to be the grip. I have to know that the mics are working well. I have to know that everything is in sequential order. I also produce Cheryl Underwood Radio for the St. Louis market. So oh, okay. I receive their recordings, but I have to program in 
public service announcements and commercials and mm. music. So I do a lot of that and I do that for all of my talent. So I build commercials, I build in their shows. I have a two hour show that's a rush hour traffic jam show. Mm -hmm. And then Cheryl Underwood has a two hour talk show. So I have her plugged in strategically where no matter where you are, hopefully from West Coast to East Coast, mm -hmm. you will be able to hear her. So it's 9 o'clock in the morning on the West Coast, 10 o'clock Mountain Time, 11 o'clock Central, and 12 o'clock Eastern. So I'm trying to make sure that I can get everybody in on that time frame to hear some part of Cheryl Underwood Radio. But I'm happy to announce that we just hit 78,000 listeners oh, wow. on my internet radio station. That's awesome. That is, man, that's, yeah, that's awesome. Well, you're a one-woman show. We're kind of a two-man show with um, Lamar doing some of the heavy lifting. Lamar? Some. <laughs> Almost that, all. That, that's why I've been here for the last, like, what, 40 minutes? <laughs> yeah, 40 minutes uh, fumbling with stuff. Yeah. But, <laughs> I mean, it's a lot. That, like you said, like when, you put, when you're putting into doing a radio show, it's a lot that goes in it. What, what just kind of possess you to kind of go that way of like more of a traditional FM station versus just kind of like a, like one of the radio stations you hear on like satellite FM and, uh, and just all over the place and stuff like the Howard Stern show and stuff like that. Right. I'm not a shock jock type personality. And my whole thing is to give other people an opportunity to shine while I do what I do. And so the internet stations, as you say, they do everything, they say everything. And there's a particular um, demographic of individuals that I was targeting. And I'm trying to get them transition more into digital and not terrestrial radio. Mm -hmm. Terrestrial is your traditional radio where you're on a dial, get in your car and you hear it. Well, they needed to learn that you can also hear internet radio when you get in your car. If you have a Bluetooth system set up for your vehicle, then you can do that. If you don't, the auxiliary cord can plug into your device and you can still hear radio through your car. But those of us that are baby boomers on up have a difficult time understanding how that internet technology work. Although they may go on YouTube <laughs> they may also go shopping. For some reason, they can't translate that you can also listen to the radio station just like you shop and watch video on YouTube. True, true. So that I wanted true. to educate that demographic, that population of people so that they could enjoy programming that we also have to offer on Internet radio. Man, this was up. Um, so with you kind of creating this station and this format, what are some of the things that you are looking to push as far as the content that is on your station? Like is your station more about music and music pay playlists or is it more talk shows or, or is it kind of that nice simple balance? And what are some of the shows that are on, on the station right now? Uh, some of the shows that are on the station right now, um, we have, I had a person that was part of what we were doing over at the internet station that I created. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that happened to her was a tragic accident. Uh, oh, her man. son took his life on Christmas night. Oh man. And we didn't know how to handle that. And oh, wow. When I had the opportunity, I wanted her to be able to vent about that and talk about that. So I gave her a platform and she created a show called Face to Face with Lady Di. And she talks about suicide, uh, mental illness, drug addiction and recovery, and bullying. Mm -hmm. And those were some of the very prominent things that were going on in you know, our world during this time of 2019 to the current day. Right. And it giving her that platform, she reached so many people. And I want to tell you, we actually know three lives that we saved because wow. of her show. 
Wow. So it makes what I do worth doing. Um, I'm not making tons of money from this or anything like that. Uh, People just don't seem to appreciate what internet radio can do because we're global. And we've got listeners all over the place, everywhere. And we just picked up Israel. So we've got Finland, we got Israel, we have Japan, we've got the Philippines, Jamaica, we've got all kinds of people and the Canada, United Kingdom, the UE, we just got people everywhere. And I see all of those numbers in addition to the United States. So it is, it's a blessing to be able to broadcast like that. Mm -hmm. I just implemented a a show with uh, Minister Rich Miller who on Tuesdays will come on and he's bringing souls to Christ through his show. He had 300 listeners last night alone and Mm -hmm. he keeps growing. I have another young man who was my first male on the female dominated station, (laughs) TOPL radio. Um, We had a interview with him and we talked about independent artists because he's one. Mm -hmm. And I said, don't you think that independent artists should have a platform where they can really get the shine that they deserve? Because we have a lot of talented independent artists and because they're not with a major record label, we may not get an opportunity to enjoy their talent. And he said, I absolutely think so. So he and I created the Unsigned Artist Show. And every Saturday, he's on there with independent artists. Some of them I have met. You might uh, be familiar with the name Damon Dash. Mm -hmm. Well, his little cousin, Cece Dash, her mom got in touch with me. I got her an interview. I interviewed her. And so she has music that's plugged into our station. So one of the things that I do enjoy is also putting independent artists on our station with mainstream artists as well. Oh, that's what's up. All right. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to take a short break. We're going to pay some bills. And uh, when we get back, we're going to talk to uh, Miss Lady Ray about how she feels about the impact of her station and about about what stations like like hers can bring to the table to to help further the independent creator movement. So uh um uh this is the Foresight Podcast and we'll be right back. Hey what's up fam? DKG72 here and I wanted to talk to you guys about Patreon. If you know at the end of every video I always ask you guys to head over to Patreon, pick a tier and uh, choose and your monthly donations help us uh, the studio create more and more great content for you guys to watch and listen to and read and enjoy this month i just added on a new tier which is our 15 dollars foresight gang tier gang gang um <laughs> i always wanted to do that in the video <laughs> Anyway, uh, with the $15 Foresight, uh, Foresight Gang tier, you're going to get uh, 15% off the merch store on ForesightStudio.com. You also get the Foresight Podcast one week ahead of its drop date. You also get a free black and white pinup downloadable that you can download every month. And uh, yeah, it's just a cool tier. Now, there are the other tiers, like there's the $5 tier, there's a $10 tier um, where you get like uh, 5% off, 10% off. And then there's the $20 tier in which you get a whopping 25% off. So head over to patreon.com DKG72 comics and check out all the tiers and figure out which one works for you. And just remember the $15 tier and the $20 tier, you'll get the Foresight Podcast one week ahead of its drop date. All right, guys, it's your boy DKG72 and I'm out. Peace. Five, four, three, two. All right, and we are back. So um, this is Foresight Podcast, and we are on with Miss Lady Ray Johnson, and um, we're talking about internet radio. And let's get into the name of your station, because when I talked with you, you you were talking about how special the name of the station and the call signs of the station are. So kind of explain that process and how you came to its current name and, of course, the name of it and where we can find you on the internet. 
Okay. Um, so when we started off, we started off with a station called WUTM, and it was standing for the Woo in the Loop. Mm -hmm. So in University City at UC High, they have this call, what time is it? It's you time. Yep. And I was friends with Rod Jennings, who was here in St. Louis as one of the aldermen. Mm -hmm. And he told me, with that being his alma mater, that youth time would be a good, you know, acronym for the radio station. So I put W in front of it because, you know, in radio, you either W or K. Right. So I tried several different things and W was it. So W-U-T-M is how we started out. Well, some things happened. Dallas took off in another direction. And because everything had been associated with WUTM, I had to rebrand. Mm -hmm. So I rebranded. I was trying to figure it out. My oldest son said, hey, since you're in Overland, why don't you use OVL as part of what you're going to use and put a K or a W in front of it? Mm -hmm. So we put K-O-V-L. And when you end up doing something, I was like, well, there's a tag. I need a tag. So I asked one of the partners, when you think of, because I want the logo to be a lion. I just love male lions. I'm Capricorn. It has nothing to do with that, but I love male lions. I'm a Leo, and by the way, so we I, understand. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I said, when you see a lion, what do you think of? And he said, well, it's a king. A king is a ruler. Mm -hmm. So we gave, came up with the tagline, rulers over the land, overland. Oh, so okay. that was that way we could go wherever because we were over the land, but just not in overland. Right. Um, some things transpired, growing pains once again. And I was not in a position to do and run the station for a few months in the way that I had. So I needed to fall back. And in doing so, someone decided, oh, well, I'll just LLC, K-O-V-L. And they actually took the company. Right. And got the passwords because this was an intern I had had for three years. Wow. And they went in, changed the passwords, did everything, locked me out of everything. So I had to rebrand the third time. Wow. This time I had to get rid of everyone that was a part of what I was doing before. And I talked to a good friend of mine and we'll call her Miss Ann. And Miss Ann said, well, you know, the pancake house had that same situation happen to them. So when you go over in Ladue and you go to the original pancake house, mm -hmm. Why don't you go that route? Because everybody knows K-O-V-L. So I went to the original K-O-V-L, which is what the acronym stands for, T-O-K-O-V-L. Okay. The original Kings Over Valuable Land. Wow, that's dope. And there you have it. What possesses you like every morning to just to get up and and just keep going. Cause I mean, I, I ain't gonna lie. I've been doing a, a, a podcast now for like two weeks <laughs> and like, you know, getting up at seven 30 in the morning, I just be like, why am I still doing this? But what possesses you? Doing this? Yeah. Yes. And it's not bringing you any money. So, you know, it's it, the thing is, is that it's bigger than me. And that's what makes me get up and do it. It's bigger than me. I have, brought others into it. Uh, you guys remember the singing duo Peaches and Herb? Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, reunited and it feels so good. And mm -hmm. Okay. Well, Peaches, <laughs> Peaches from Peaches and Herb is one of my talents. Oh, wow. And she has, on the fourth Friday of every month, she does a rhythm and rhyme radio show nice. where she has poetry and music to meet. Oh, wow. And she has an hour show that we created and she does that. So when you get celebrities like As Yet, Cool Mo D, um, who else? I got so many other people, Joe Torrey, uh, Brian McKnight, Will Downing, uh, Genuine. I've got so many celebrities that have come to me. And then on the talk side of things, more serious thing, Dr. Umar Johnson's camp reached out to me mm -hmm. at Ferguson. Wanting to be on my show. 
and I put them on. Um, Levert reached out to me and okay. wanted to be on the show when we were at Ferguson. So when you start getting people that recognize you and they keep coming and wanting to be a part of your show, mm -hmm. you kind of got to stay with it. You got, you got to keep it because it becomes bigger than I don't feel like getting up. And then to meet, talk with, and be a part of Cheryl Underwood radio and the team that is Cheryl Underwood radio brand. I definitely had to do it. So I'm going into my third year cool, of production cool. as her affiliate. And she has over wow. 517 affiliates now, and I'm number 350. Wow. So is, you know, the exposure and, and the opportunities that you can make from doing what it is that you do and what I do, everything is not about a dollar. Yeah. But there are some intangible things that you just cannot gather you know, from just making a buck here or there. Mm -hmm. And the notoriety of being able to put people's information out there. And there are people that are responding. Uh, I've got a lot of independent artists now that are responding to being on the show. They get others to listen to the show. And on top of that, I was noticed by New York and Tennessee mm -hmm. for what I do. And because they love the content that I provided and they like what I do so much, they wanted to sponsor me by promoting my radio station. So oh, that's, that's how up. we have grown to 78,000 listeners because Zeno in New York and my genre radio network in Tennessee mm -hmm. are controlling and managing over 180 plus radio stations across the world. Mm -hmm. And I'm heard all of those markets through TOKOVL. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. Um, so when I started this podcast, uh, the, the basic idea was um, I'm an entrepreneur, you know, we got t-shirts, black entrepreneur energy. And um, I knew how hard it was for, for entrepreneurs and creators to, to create and do things. And um, a lot of times I would see people just, really just have the wildest ideas about about what it is that 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 people these creators do and they don't understand sometimes what it's like being an independent person an ind um, uh, independent creator an independent business person and being that mm -hmm. you you are an independent creator and and business person what is it like you know as you're seeing your your baby grow and what it, what is it like just just making that vision happen? Well, it's a lot of it's a look. I've been talked off the ledge several times, so I don't <laughs> want to give the impression, okay, uh, that it's just easy peasy. That I just love it so. It, it, it it's a lot. It's it's really a lot, and. Um, the one thing I think that just keeps me going is I want the visibility, not just for me, but for everybody else. Um, I know that this will have an end to it. And I know that it can grow in other areas because I'm transitioning right now over to really what my first passion was, which was television. Okay. So um, the show that I'm, creating and producing right now is called the of her side so small ot capital a e r uh the of her side is a show that talks about the story behind the glory very similar to what your podcast is about okay uh those that have created businesses organizations concepts ideas and you see all of that beauty in the front of everything but you don't know the blood sweat and tears that it took to get there. Right. How many times maybe they failed? How many times did they actually quit? And then came back to the table, came back to the drawing board. And now you're getting this wonderful artist or this beautiful item or this wonderful meal because somebody decided that they didn't want to totally let it go. Um, and because of what I've learned in radio and mm -hmm. what I've learned about production, Mm -hmm. And what I've learned about working with a variety of personalities and concepts and ideas, mm -hmm. it helps to translate so smoothly into television. 
and now mm. giving a visual, not just an auditorial, auditorially uh, vision of what it is that this person is, but giving a visual concept so that people can connect and relate and feel like now they know this person and have a greater appreciation and understanding for what they do to bring what they have to you through their goods, business, and service. So it, it, by television being like your first passion, what do you see like television and radio kind of like going in the future, especially like since you've got companies like Netflix and Hulu investing into like more independent creators, what is the future market you think for those who want to kind of like really thinking about getting in television and kind of going with it? Is it still going to be kind of the same? You think it's going to bloom into something totally different? I know right now because of the coronavirus pandemic that we're in, everything has changed. Um, we've got more homeschoolers than we had. True. Mm -hmm. We have people telecommuting more than they did. And because of social distancing and everything that's going on with what that looks like and mean, the digital world is more important now than ever before. People yes. are wanting more variety. If you think about it, if you notice, advertisers get more visibility now than the actual show. Mm. You know, you're sitting there, you're watching a sports show, okay? And it's time for them to come back for the kickoff. But first, they've got to go to this sponsor. They've got to go to this commercial. And you actually get about four minutes of commercial. And then they come back and finish up that last play for either the kickoff or the touchdown or the extra point or the two point conversion. As you know, I watch football. So, <laughs> you know, the, the, the thing is, is that advertisers are getting more play now on regular television. When you got that digital thing, you've got a little bit more control. Mm. You can not have to worry so much about so many advertisers, but you can also get more advertisers because they have a bigger reach now True. and True. it may not be as costly. So I think the digital age is where we're going to be. I don't think it's going away. I think it will improve. In fact, I was just made a partner for a digital television network that I named Real Television Network for Real People. And it's R-E-E-L is the spelling of it to okay. kind of play off of that film real type situation. So we are now accepting pitches from people who want to have a show and not have to worry so much about limiting their creative expression. You know, being able to exercise their First Amendment right and not be censored uh, mm. for what it is that they want to say, of course, tastefully still, but still being able to get it out there, not having to be politically correct and still mm. be expressive about what you think, what you feel, what you've been through, what you want to go through. Um, I think that the digital world now, especially Internet and podcasting, has a whole nother level of respect and appreciation. People yes, have definitely. more choice. You know, Netflix started somewhere. Hulu, Roku, they all started somewhere. And now you've got so many others that are out there. Sling TV. Even Spectrum is giving you an app now. So there's an app almost for everything. <laughs> and people want variety. And they want control over their variety. So I think that um, we're, we're headed for an amazing opportunity. And I think those of us that are internet radio podcasting and doing digital streaming for TV are the trailblazers and on the ground floor of something that the future is just waiting for us to catch up to. $5 every month is starting to add up. <laughs> yeah, it's starting to add up. Yeah, it definitely is. It, it does start to add up, but you have control over that. Whereas if you think about your internet provider or, you know, right now or your, your TV service or let's say your TV provider, mm -hmm. they'll go up and you still have the same packet 
that yep. you signed up for, yeah, true. you know, and, and you don't have control over that. With everything else, you can eliminate. It's not a contractual. You don't have to worry about it. If you decide to stop altogether, that's it. Yeah, the sponsorship packets really do work, especially when uh, when when you're just a one or two man operation. So, I, I definitely exactly. I definitely can't uh can't be mad at that. So, with that being said, where can they find the original K O V L? Right. Yes. All right. So you can find us on Facebook at mm -hmm. T O K O V L Radio. Please like our Facebook page. What that will do for us by getting our two thousand likes, and we just hit a little bit over seventeen hundred, we will be able to connect our radio station to our Facebook page, and it would make it more convenient for others to listen. Okay. We are on Instagram at one. T O K O V L Radio. Mm -hmm. And we are on Twitter at T O K O V L Radio. Okay. And you use a lot of social media to uh, get your get the radio out there. Um we, we we all have had our social media stories. What is it like dealing with Facebook and Twitter and Instagram as outlets for, for your content? Well, and even LinkedIn, uh, mm -hmm. like how you found me. And LinkedIn is a whole other kind of animal. Um, people think that it's just like some place to post your resume, and it's not. Mm -hmm. It's some place that you can post what you do as a business, as a company, as a station, as a podcast station. Um, and people see that. That's that's the the I think the pivot that LinkedIn has made over time, not just some place to post a resume and look for a job. With the other social media outlets, I know that Facebook uh, benefits from advertising that you purchase to get your visibility out there, to get yourself out there. But one thing I think we have to keep in mind is that Facebook, along with some of the other ones, give you likes they give you followers. They don't necessarily give you action because even mm. though you can put an action item on there to do something, it doesn't mean that people will act on it. They may have an emotion about it, but it doesn't necessarily mean they'll meet the call to action that's on more. it. So that's why you have to use more than one, one area of social media to get the visibility. Saturation is highly important. Facts. And by the time a person clicks in to what you've said, even though you've said it, they have to see it seven times. Mm. So when they finally see it on that seventh time, they'll go, oh, yeah, isn't Foresight podcast on tonight? And you've been posting it every day for mm -hmm. the past six days. And it's that seventh day that it will occur. You need time with all social media to saturate the audience so that they do click in, buy in. Uh, one thing that I did notice, and I don't know if this exists in other cities, but St. Louis is a very last minute market. They wait to <laughs> wow. the very last minute Preach. to Preach. do a lot of things, unfortunately. <laughs> and then they want to you know, be upset about the fact that they didn't get what they wanted because they waited until the last minute. Mm. So when it comes to listening, um, one of the things that's, that you guys have for the last minute market is the fact that you are recorded and that they can go and grab your podcast. I'm a live broadcast radio station. If you didn't listen to it when it happened, you missed it. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, Just man. like your radio. You know, so it either presses the urgency for people to pay attention Mm -hmm. or they'll miss out. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, it just, the way that you utilize social media, it could be your greatest ally or it could be your worst enemy. Uh, <laughs> that's another bar. Well, Miss Lady Ray, um, I just want to thank you for coming on to the podcast. Um, you really, you gave a lot of information and um, just enjoy talking to you, honestly. Uh, so thank you so much for coming on to the podcast. Uh, we're very glad to have you. Lamar? Enjoyed you as always. Enjoyed you. So. 
We're well, looking I, forward. I am so grateful that you even invited me to be a part of the podcast. And um, I'm glad that I was able to help add, you know, I hope some insight, not only to what I do, but just to what we all do uh, as creatives in this broadcast industry. And we need, we're needed, you know, yeah, yeah. the information that we share appeals to a different audience. So I don't, I don't worry about being a competition. Like I think that we're supposed to be a broadcast solidarity, right. you yes. know, radio solidarity, podcast solidarity, cross promote. I have always been a cross promote type person. Because what my audience may enjoy, your audience may not enjoy and vice versa. Right. So we all bring our own flair. We all bring our own creativity. And we all bring our own opinions that, you know, people can have an opportunity and a conversation around. It's room for everybody. So I thank you. Yeah. Everybody can eat. Everybody yes. can yes. eat from the table. Definitely. And yes. we thank so you. Um, I just want to say... I love you to life and on purpose and I'll see you on the other side. Definitely. You definitely will. So guys, um, real quick, if uh, you like the podcast, please, when you go over to anchor, please go ahead and uh, subscribe to the podcast, become an audience member. Um, also that we have a Patreon and uh, the Patreon will be linked in the description. So please sign up for that. That helps support the studio and, Helps, uh, help, helps me create all of the wonderful things you see on YouTube and uh, on the podcast and everything. Um, also, if you want to get in touch with me, you can reach me on Twitter and Instagram at DKG72. If you want to get in touch with super producer DJ Nooney, better known as Lamar Harris, you can be reached at Lamar Harris 314 or the LamarHarris.com. Backroom Beats Tuesday through Friday every Yes, and definitely uh, get your morning started off right with the Backroom Beats podcast. And also, when you have time and you're rolling in your car, it's a sunny day. The weather's feeling right. Birds are out chirping, the little animated birds, not, not the real birds, animated birds. When everything's feeling right, go ahead and hook up your Bluetooth. Take your, take your phone and put it on T-O-K-O-V-L. And listen to some of the great content that is on there that is produced by our guest, uh, the wonderful Miss Lady Ray Johnson. And uh, on that note, my name is David Gordon, DKG72. This is the Foresight Podcast, and we will talk to you all later. Peace.